Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing the protein kinase C pathway. Okay, so we've discussed that uh, when a ligand arrives for a G protein coupled receptor that is coupled to a heterotrimeric GQ slash 11 heterotrimeric G protein, uh, then uh, what will happen is that that heterotrimeric G protein will be activated by the G protein coupled receptor, creating us the alpha subunit that is in the on state. This alpha subunit, which is of the family G alpha Q slash 11, is then going to go off and activate a phospholipase C enzyme that is within the beta family. So either phospholipase C beta 1, phospholipase C beta 2, phospholipase C beta 3, or phospholipase C beta 4. What we now want to see is what those phospholipase C enzymes are going to do. And they're going to act on something called phosphatidylinositol 4, 5, bisphosphate. Okay, and we're just having a discussion of phosphoglycerolipids to understand the structure of phosphatidylinositol 4,5-bisphosphate, okay, which is going to be a phosphoglycerolipid. Right, so we've discussed the structure of phosphatidic acid, okay. We're now going to uh, discuss how to build a more general phosphoglycerolipid from phosphatidic acid. Basically, it is through this group that I've already highlighted in turquoise here. This is still in existence even once you have linked uh, the phosphate group to the alcohol group of the third carbon of the glycerol molecule. And this is one of these carboxylic acid-like groups. So what you can actually do is link this to another alcohol group, basically. So if I bring along another alcohol group here, what can happen is you can form another phosphoester link on this opposite side. You can take the alcohol group off the phosphate group, take the hydrogen off the alcohol group, bind those two things together to make water, okay, and then bind the phosphorus atom of the phosphate group to the oxygen atom, like so, to create another phosphoester link. So what you can actually do is add on other groups onto the opposite side of this phosphate group here, and this is how you create a more general phosphoglycerolipid, okay, by binding other alcohols onto the phosphate group of the phosphatidic acid molecule via phosphoester links. Okay, so uh, before moving on to the structure of phosphatidylinositol 4,5-bisphosphate, I firstly want to tell you about the main phospholipid that makes up the phospholipid bilayers. Okay, so uh, this phospholipid is a phosphoglycerolipid, and it's called phosphatidylcholine. Okay, and this is a running uh, principle for these phosphoglycerolipids that because they've all got a phosphatidic acid molecule within their structure, they have this prefix phosphatidyl, which basically means all of this stuff here, the entire phosphatidic acid molecule. And then the second part of their name refers to the group that you have stuck on. So we're going to stick on choline. Now, phosphatidylcholine, for short, is often abbreviated to PC, and it also has another old name, which is lecithin. Okay, so sometimes you will hear people refer to this as lecithin. Okay, now, uh, phosphatidyl is for the P here, and C is for the choline. Now, I should just stress one thing about phosphatidic acid before we go any further, which is that there is not just one phosphatidic acid molecule. I did not tell you what these two long-chain carboxylic acids were supposed to be, okay? They were arbitrary, basically, okay? So there are many different phosphatidic acid molecules. You can have any old long-chain carboxylic acid in position 1, and then any other long-chain carboxylic acid in position 2. They don't even need to be the same long chain carboxylic acid. So there is a huge number of different phosphatidic acid molecules. However, exactly which long chain carboxylic acid molecule you have here doesn't really hugely affect the properties of the phosphatidic acid molecule. And likewise, they won't really affect the um, properties of the uh, more well, the phosphoglycerolipid that's got an extra additional group stuck on here. 
Okay, but that means that there's not going to be just one phosphatidyl-CoV molecule, because again, we haven't set what these long-chain carboxylic acids are going to be. All I need to tell you then is what this group that we're going to phosphorstyrify onto the phosphatidic acid molecule actually is, and it's basically going to be a choline molecule. Okay, now this is the same choline as you have within the famous neurotransmitter acetylcholine. Now in acetylcholine you have taken acetic acid, which is the old name for ethanoic acid, and you have esterified it onto the choline molecule, which is an alcohol. Okay, so we're not going to look at acetylcholine, we're just going to see the choline on its own. So here is that alcohol group. And then you've got an ethylene group, so a two-carbon structure here, okay, like so. And then on the other side of the ethylene group, what you then have is a nitrogen atom, which is then going to have three methyl groups coming off it. One, two, three. Okay, and that's the choline molecule finished. However, we haven't quite finished it because nitrogen shouldn't have four bonds. Nitrogen likes to have three bonds and one lone pair of electrons. The fact that nitrogen has four bonds here tells us that one of these bonds between the nitrogen and the methyl group is uh, formed by both of the electrons coming from the nitrogen, basically, from the nitrogen's lone pair. Okay, so let's say it's this bond, and let's discuss this a bit more. Okay, so basically, in a covalent bond, you have two electrons. And usually, one comes from each member of the bond. But in this case, the nitrogen will put in both electrons. Now, as I say, the usual understanding of a covalent bond is that one electron belongs to the nitrogen, and one then belongs to the carbon. So when the nitrogen does this, when it puts these two electrons into the covalent bond like this, it is as though the nitrogen has given an electron away to this carbon atom. Okay, it's as though this one now belongs to the carbon, and this one belongs to the nitrogen. Okay, so effectively the nitrogen has given away an electron, which gives it a positive charge. Okay, and you might say, hang on a second, doesn't the carbon therefore have a negative charge? And the answer is no, because even though it has received an electron from the nitrogen, when it originally entered this sordid arrangement, it will have come in with a positive charge. Okay, so when it received an electron from the nitrogen, it became neutral. Okay, and it deferred the positive charge effectively onto the nitrogen. So overall, the choline molecule does have a positive charge. Okay, right. So if you add this choline molecule onto a phosphatidic acid molecule via phosphorstyrification of the alcohol group onto the free carboxylic acid light group of the phosphate group of the phosphatidic acid molecule, then you get what's known as a phosphatidylcholine or a lecithin molecule. Okay, and this is the main phospholipid that you have within the phospholipid bilayers of cells. Okay, what we now want to discuss is the target for phospholipase C, because phosphatidylcholine is not the target for phospholipase C. The target for phospholipase C is a much, much, much rarer phospholipid that you find within the phospholipid by there. But it's still a phosphoglycerolipid. Okay, so... The phosphoglycerolipid that is within the cell membrane but is much, much rarer than phosphatidylcholine, uh, which is the target for phospholipase C enzymes, is called phosphatidyl, and all that means is that it's derived from phosphatidic acid. And then it's phosphatidyl inositol, okay, and we'll discuss what inositol is in a moment, 4,5-bisphosphate. Okay, so what this means is we're going to start off with a phosphatidic acid molecule. We're then going to add on an inositol molecule via phosphosterification onto the uh, free carboxylic acid light group of the phosphate group of the phosphatidic acid molecule. And then we're going to add on two extra phosphate groups. Now for short, phosphatidyl inositol 4,5-bisphosphate is often abbreviated to PIP2. The P is for phosphatidyl, the I is for inositol, 
The P then is for phosphate, and because you've got two of them, you put a 2 there. So it's either called PIP2 or PIP2 for short. Okay, so here is our phosphatidic acid molecule. We're now going to add on inositol. But before we do that, let's just colour it in so that it's easier. Okay, so we've got our two long chain carboxylic acid molecules there. We've got our glycerol molecule in green here. And we've then got our phosphate group coming off the third carbon's alcohol group, like so. Okay, now we need to discuss what actually is inositol. Okay, so again, inositol is the old name for a molecule that's more correctly called cyclohexane. Okay, so that's all nice and simple. And then one, two, three, four, five, six hexol. Okay, it couldn't have gone any further. Um, cyclohexane one, two, three, four, five, six hexol, which is a total mouthful, but at least it tells us what we're dealing with here. It tells us that we are dealing with a six carbon cyclic ring, like so. So here is our cyclohexane drawn skeletally here. Okay, so remember in skeletal formula you don't show carbon atoms, they're implicitly shown by corners, and you don't show hydrogen atoms coming off carbon atoms. Okay, so this is cyclohexane where all of the bonds within the six-membered carbon ring are single bonds. Okay, and then what we're going to have is alcohol groups coming off the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth carbons of the cyclohexane ring. Okay, so all of the carbons in the cyclohexane ring are going to have an alcohol group coming off them and also a hydrogen coming off them. Okay, and we'll call it there for this video and we'll continue the discussion in the next video.